Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Tire Twice, I'm Joshua. Today I'm excited to be launching a new sort of mini series of videos here on the channel that I'm referring to as Slack and Co. From the Vault, Harry Bring Them Back. Uh, so if you're not aware, Harry Slacken, uh, sort of the king of fragrance, he's the, the master mind and master nose behind many of the most beloved scents uh, from Slacken & Co. and Bath & Body Works for many years, uh, as well as, of course, now in Homeworks with Scentworks and Homeworks uh, and Home Aroma. And so there was really exciting news that happened uh, a couple months back on social media where Harry hinted and then sort of semi-officially announced that Slacken & Co. as a, a company or sort of parent company over different fragrance lines is going to be coming back for 2022. So a bit of brief history, uh, and some of this was shared actually by Harry when he did a live, Instagram live with Mr. Kong's mom, Melanie, um, and the Homeworks Candles Instagram account about a month ago sometime in, I wanna say it was maybe early November. Um, and there he shared that as we know, Slack & coexisted before uh, the partnership with Bath & Body Works, and he was approached by the CEO at the time of Bath & Body Works, Whiteborn Candle Company, uh, when they were really trying to re reinvigorate, revitalize the home fragrance portion of the Bath & Body Works uh, you know, brands. And so he convinced Harry to be heavily involved and sort of essentially partnered with and bought uh, the rights to Slack & Co um, and became sort of a parent company of Slack & Co. What Harry shared that was really interesting and, and I think I sort of always assumed or hoped this, but it was nice to hear that it was the reality is that um, Slack & Co still sort of existed as their own company brand within the Bath & Body Works L Brands White Barn family um, in the sense that uh, Bath & Body Works is headquartered in Ohio. Slack & Co for many years of the partnership was actually still headquartered in New York City, I believe on the bottom of some of these candles, it actually says like, I think 603 Broadway or something like that was, um, is that right? Da, 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 503 Broadway um, in Soho. And so they, they really did sort of operate as their own fragrance house that happened to sell through Bath & Body Works. And so that partnership lasted for a number of years and then the partnership ended um, and Harry has announced that the Slacken & Co company brand that Bath & Body Works had, you know, sort of owned the naming rights to for, a period of time after the partnership ended has expired and he now has sort of his name back. So Slacken & Co will now be the parent company, my understanding, of Homeworks and Scentworks and potentially TBD Slacken & Co as its own um, sort of brand or, or category of candles. So that's really exciting. Um, he hasn't announced where they're going to be sold. Um, TBD, I don't have any sort of insider info either. I'm really excited though that they're coming back, that he's coming back under that. Really, of course, love Homeworks and, and Scentworks is great too, but um, to have some of the, the original blends, hopefully, or scents out there as Slack & Co is for all of us, you know, old time <laughs> candle fans, uh, it's, it's really exciting to hear that. And so he kind of in Harry fashion uh, sparked the fires a bit where uh, a couple months back, he just posted on his Harry Slacken uh, personal Instagram, um, you know, a question of, hey, Slack and Nicole, what are your favorite scents from, from back in the day? And, you know, I immediately started typing and putting in, well, not typing, I was typing, um, and putting in like my, my sort of two cents or $5 worth of, hey, I love this and this and this and this, please bring it back, please, you know, redo it. Um, not clear what he'll be doing with that or if he will be bringing back you know, some old favorites or sort of reimagining them um, with the same name, with new names. Not sure what the marketing or the branding side of that will be, but my hopes are that he has some favorites from back in the day that he's excited to sort of, again, reintroduce and potentially reimagine um, in an even better way under the Slack & Co, uh, the new Slack & Co for 2022 branding. So what this whole, you know, four minutes intro is to say is what I've done is I'm doing this series where I go into the vault, AKA, like the candle closet in my in my house, um, and pull out some of my old favorites from Slacken and Co. Um, from you know the early era of, of his time at Bath and Body Works, 2009 to 2012 ish or so, um, and from there I'm gonna say, hey, here are the ones that I want. So I'm I, I'm gonna do it as probably five videos. I'm thinking sort of your winter, holiday, spring, summer, fall, and then maybe another one that is just like the extras or the ones that aren't seasonally specific. Um, so TBD, figure it out exactly, but four or five videos. First one I'm doing today is the winter holiday scents. Um, I'm gonna talk through, actually I have 12 scents that I'm saying, Harry, bring them back. So went into my vault, gonna show you them. I will say, you know, many, you know, old time Bath & Body Works, Slack & Co fans, um, it's pretty, I think, known and agreed that like 2011, maybe 2012, but primarily 2011, really was the height of some of the best collections 
um, just hit after hit after hit after hit um, at Slack and Co and Bath and Body Works. So most of these candles actually are oldies but goodies that I just didn't have the heart to burn because I love them so much. Um, and most of them are from 2011, a couple from 2012. This is by no means completely exhaustive as to sort of every scent that I love from that era. Um, there are some that can that were Slack and Co scents that continue to still be sold at Bath and Body Works. You know, your Winter, your Fireside. Um, you know, your marshmallow, peppermint, fresh balsam, evergreen. Um, so those ones are still there. So those are ones, you know, honorable mentions. They're scents I love um, that I believe were Slack and Co originals, but they're there already. I, if they come back in a new reimagined form, great. Uh, but these are 12 candles that really are not out that I would love to see come back. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna talk about today is Winter Night. This is from the 2011 Winter Holiday Collection. As you can see back then in 2011, uh, they all said Slack & Co had a silver box around them with a sort of real life photograph image there. And they were very consistent as far as this was the branding and imagery they used for all or nearly all of those candles. Um, and so the notes on this on Winter Night, just kind of a gray wax, uh, was inspired by the bright moonlight and a distant fire on a crisp winter night, Fir tree, warm cypress, and clove blood bud blend perfectly with cedar and a touch of incense. A couple of things I love about this. First of all, the stories, okay, I don't need it, but it's fine. But it's so detailed, partially because, you know, a Slack and Co candle is going to have, like the homeworks candles, many more notes than, than others. But also, um, it really goes to show that they really did put so much thought into it versus Bath and Butter, which just kind of churns and burns now. So we've got fir tree, cypress, clove, cedar, and incense. Winter's Night, it's the perfect name for this. There's been really nothing like it um, since then, at Bath & Wide Works at least. And it is, it's deep, it's, you know, it's got a bit of that incense, um, you know, the, the fir, cypress, and cedar, all trees, and and, it's, and evergreens, um, but they're, they're, this isn't like a Christmas tree scent. This really is like the clove bud, the incense. I would, it's almost like a patchouli kind of earthy scent without being patchouli necessarily. It's dark, it's spicy, but it's not your holiday spice. It's like a winter spice due to the clove um, and just this, the spiciness of incense. I've said this before, this is gonna sound weird, but there's almost like this, a, a part of the, the scent hits your nose. It almost reminds me of like Dr. Pepper, the spices that are in Dr. Pepper, the soda, but obviously it's not that, but just really rich and deep. And for those that love fireside, but don't just want burnt embers over and over, though this does have a bit of that to it. Uh, this was a great one. So Winter Night, would love to get back. Also Winter Cabin, aka Chestnut Clove, which still makes fairly regular appearances at Bath & Body Works. That's like one of my top, top, top favorites, but that one still appears regularly. So that's again, honorable mention. Love to see it reimagined with Slack & Co, but I'm also okay with its current form. And right, let's get into a couple of baked goods or sort of gourmands before we dig into my absolute favorites and some conceptuals over here. Again, 12 candles total. Promise I'll get through this a little bit faster. We're already eight minutes in. Um, so Creamy Nutmeg. This one, again, has made some reappearances at Bath & Body Works over the years, uh, granted in different packaging. This one actually is your 2010 packaging, I believe. Um, yeah, this is from, from mid-2010. Um, creamy Nutmeg, red, a warm blend of fresh ground nutmeg, vanilla, and pralines. It, it really is an overwhelmingly milky creamy, so not super, super sweet. It's that really soft, warm, kind of your kitchen spice. Um, I would say similar, like your spiced balsam or kitchen, um, or the spice, yeah, kitchen, holiday spice from Homeworks are reminiscent of this, where it's got a soft warmth to it. And it's almost like a creamy milkiness. Maybe it's a bit of tonka or, or, or a little bit of musk in the background, but not really. Really with a lot of that, the ground nutmeg, but the warm blend, really love that. And it just, the the other blends um, that are similar to that at Bath & Works don't really compare, but you also don't see many blends that are like this. You either go conceptual and outdoorsy, or you go deep into caramel, drizzle, cupcakes, etc. which this is neither of those things. It's really a nice balanced blend. Then we go this boy, this classic, this one's actually from 2009. And this was vanilla shortbread. Um, again, the labels really didn't change much, 2009, 2011, um, just like iterating on what really worked and was really, uh, very pretty. And you have all these together and they'd look really nice together, very cohesive. This one actually had no scent notes on it. Back in 2009, they didn't have scent notes on it, um, but I'll try to do my best of this. This, I will say, is very, very reminiscent, happily, to his limoncello cupcake in Homeworks. I think that may be a reimagining of this because though it was vanilla shortbread, it leaned heavily with a, a zesty lemon. And it's just so 
authentic. It's one of those bakery gourmands where it literally smells like you had shortbread, which is that like, you know, like a think of a Girl Scout shortbread cookie. Like it's got that, it's buttery, it has that snap to it. It's crispy, it's crumbly in a good way, not chewy, um, with some really rich vanilla, maybe a little bit of like the powdered sugar on there, but not a frosting, not a glaze, not an icing, nothing like that with fresh lemon zest and some lemon juice in the in the dough, most likely as well. It's just so nice. Again, lemon gelato cupcake is a good replacement for it, but I had to throw this one in here because it's such an oldie and a, and a goodie. This one here, this also in the, two, this is we're getting into sort of some of the core of the 2011 collection as well. This one is dark chocolate mint. Now in this collection, maybe at some point guys, I'll do a video of the 2011 holiday collection because I do have some others. There was like um, winter sangria and uh, I want to say spiced gumdrop and sugar, candied sugar plum, um, versions of which have sort of made appearances kind of um, in spiced gingerbread um, in Homeworks collections since 2017. Um, this one has not, to my understanding, this is dark chocolate mint, was primarily overshadowed by mint chocolate, which was big at the time and has come back a million times, Bath and Body Works. But dark chocolate mint really was a bit different. And I just, this label, again, it's just so, it's pretty, it's a little bit artistic, it's you know, it's classy, it's just really clean and straightforward, which I really appreciate. The notes on this one, a luscious blend of dark chocolate shavings and pure peppermint, layered with rich vanilla cream and just a touch of caramel. This one, I haven't burned it for years. I mean, this is from 2011, I probably haven't burned it at least the past seven or eight years, most likely. Um, wonderful, of course, burn on that. But it is straightforward in the sense that it is a rich, dark chocolate, there's nothing really milky or creamy about that. With that mint, which is significant, but it's not your Andy's mint, and it is different enough from mint chocolate to stand on its own. Um, vanilla cream, not super creamy. I would almost say maybe there's the dash of espresso in there. Um, just enough, like a lot of you know recipes will add to a chocolate cookie or a brownie, will add like a little bit of espresso powder or two shots of espresso. Not enough to make it coffee flavored or even to call it mocha necessarily, but it just really, is a nice uh, counterbalance to the richness of cacao and cocoa and chocolate. And I think that could be in here too. So just a really nice, deep, rich chocolate blend without again being cloying or overly sweet or too milky or creamy. Now let's get into two of sort of the, the spicy blends from the years. I've got 2011 and actually 2009 in here. First start with 2009. This one is such a pretty Again, such a, just a classic, classic label. Maybe it's dated now. You, you wouldn't necessarily see this kind of label in, you know, 2021, 22, but it is such just a classic, classic label that doesn't age. Um, no notes on this one, Holly Pomander. Pomanders are when you have that citrus fruit, typically I think an orange, and you jab it and poke it and stick it with cloves, whole cloves. And if you cover it, it actually um, will, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, Help me out here, guys. It it makes it I don't want to say shelf stable, um, but it uh, it makes the the clove oil um, you know dries out and makes it so it doesn't rot essentially. But so you have this like ball of cloves, or just like halfway done, and you put it in you know some water and cinnamon sticks and simmer it on your stovetop and get great sort of potpourri scent going. Um, but the palmander is that citrus covered in uh, the clove, and this is really interesting. It's funny. I had Fabrizio sniff it and. He's like, ooh, it's a little, a little, a little funny, a little musty. And I don't disagree, which partially could be the age of the candle. I mean, we're talking this thing is 12 years old at this point. Um, but, and but also speaking to the quality of Slack and Co, like 12 years old, it it doesn't have like this is from it got cold, I think, in shipment, because I actually had purchased it from someone maybe four or five years back. But like it still sticks in the jar, it doesn't have any weirdness or oils coming to the surface. Like if I had lit this and burned it, it would probably still be perfect, which I don't know that I will, because it's, you know, one of my vault, <laughs> my, my, my not currently burning candles, but get to the scent. So you have a citrus, so it's, it's a warm spiced citrus. It does have clove, but it's not overwhelming clove. Um, you know, the, there's a bit of, in this, there's like cranberries and some greenery. I could see some of that, like probably some bay leaf in here. The citrus peel, I would say almost like a candied citrus peel, a candied orange peel, so a little bit of clove, maybe some cranberry, bay leaf, a little bit of other greenery, that's probably it. Could be a dash of sage or something, but it's just very, very holiday, very warming, um, almost like a warming holiday tea or something. Beautiful scent. 
And then similar, but a bit different to that, this one was around for a couple of years um, at Bath & Body Works with Slatkin & Co. And I believe maybe after that, and it was just spice, traditional spice. Now they were doing some sort of kaleidoscope artwork in this collection, which you will see in some of the others as well. And it it's kind of like here are the ingredients or things that are in this candle, but it's done um, artistically just in you know the kaleidoscope form, right? Um, again, this is from the 2011 collection, uh, the perfect Christmas spice, red hot cinnamon. So this is when people say, oh, I don't like it to be candy. These are your red hot cinnamon versus your soft sort of Ceylon, you know, broken cinnamon sticks um, or cinnamon bark, warm clove and spiced orange peel. So similar notes probably to what's in your spice pomander or your holiday pomander. This is just, this is reminiscent of cinnamon and clove buds if you're familiar with Bath and Body Works. It's almost like this was the OG that influenced the current holiday candle that is there. That's almost like holiday is a mix almost of holiday pomander and spice. Cinnamon and clove buds was a traditional cinnamon and clove buds. This one is a bit more nuanced. It had red hot cinnamon, it had clove, but it had that spiced orange peel. And to me, this is sort of when you're thinking of like a cinnamon Christmas candle, spice is the one. And this was, I think, an old uh, OG Slack and Co blend. And it's just, it's not, it's straightforward. It's it's not overwhelmed with adding something creamy in there or adding a frosting or any other notes that it doesn't need. It's straightforward, but it's it's a really like elevated cinnamon candle, essentially, is what that is. So really, that's a lovely one. All right, three. This is the those ones are great. My top six here includes what a few of us, uh, the show seventy eight and, and the bronze blogger, and I think others have jokingly referred to as sort of the holy trinity. Um, no disrespect to to you know someone who uses that term uh, more uh, based on religious beliefs, um, but sort of the the holy trio, let's call it the best of the best trio of Slacken and Co. Winter um, holiday scents. I'll save those for the top three, um, but then we'll get into three that are like right in line. This is certainly this would be I'd say probably top six for what I'm thinking of today. First one we'll get into is this was the first I believe first or second release of a good classic Merry Mistletoe. Again, you've got that kaleidoscope look there. Mary Bristol has come back a few times, primarily at semi-annual sale at Bath & Body Works, but as um, Kent from the Candle Channel has shared, it really has, it was tweaked when it, you know, it was out for a couple of years, went away for five or six years, and when it came back it was a bit tweaked, a bit sort of cheaper, maybe juicier, not really certain, but certainly it was like an imitation of the Slack & Co. original blend, um, and just was good, but lacked I think the nuance that we see in this one. And the notes are, um, and sorry, I don't know if you guys want to see, actually, if you let me know in the comments down below, do you like to see the bottom of the candle as well? Or is it good enough for me just to read it to you? I've got lots more of these coming and I'm not filming them uh, today necessarily. So uh, of the from the vault videos, so let me know if you like to see the bottom of those or not. A, a magical blend of frosted cranberries, blue spruce and iced citrus make this a merry scent for the season. Um, and again, it really is, think of mistletoe. It's got some berries in it. It's got the spruce versus the fir or, the, or, or uh, balsam um, and iced citrus. Not sure what, citrus probably an orange. Oh boy. There was also, I did not bring this in the collection, but there was, um, there, this is Mary Mistletoe. There are two missing from the 2011 collection that I have but didn't put in this. Um, oh my gosh, I cannot remember the one. It was similar to Mary Mistletoe. Um, I will add it here in editing. Um, I forget the name of it, but it was also white wax like this. And it had it was similar, and it came out maybe in 2011 and 12, but it had a bit more of like a toothpaste edge to it. I think it had some mint in it. Um, can't for the life of me remember the name. Um, but Mary Mistletoe was the clear winner between those two. If you were comparing this or that, this would be the winner. And it's just, it's, again, I wouldn't call it, it's not similar to the Frosted Cranberry, if you're familiar with that, it, but it has a really juicy, fruity blend of your, your pine. So it's got a bit of that outdoors, but it has, it's like, if some of these are more like, you know, there's a little bit of greenery, but more berries. This one is more green with a little bit of berries in it. Um, and it's just like, again, it's one of the classic holiday scents from Slack & Co. Uh, mid mid aughts era. Love to see that one come back. Then we've got this one here is, I want to say this is 2010. I think it was out in 2009 and 10. Don't know if it came out in 2011. Um, and this was Frosted Treat. Now, of course, you've got your Evergreen, your Fresh Balsam. You had, you know, many others along the way. Um, one that was just Tree. Now we have, you know, Tree Farm and different ones at, at BBW. But Frosted Tree um, really was such a beautiful vintage scent for me. Um, the notes on this one, rich cedar, fir needle, and golden amber blend naturally with notes of patchouli and rosemary. So this is sort of a vintage Christmas is almost what I'd call this. 
it's it's like what I imagine, you know, Christmas in the 50s would be old timey, um, very like sort of Americana. Um, and it's, it, it's conceptual. It's one of those, those, it says frosted tree. I don't know actually if, if I agree with the name in the sense that this isn't like an outdoorsy conceptual tree for me. This is, you have a Christmas tree inside, but then you have, again, a bit of the, this, the herbal from like the rosemary, but then some earthiness, some dirtiness almost from the patchouli. And then the amber has like that mysterious richness to it, almost an earthiness as well, without being, it's very light on the amber. So, but it is very much, you know, the cedar and fir needle is primary, um, but it just is such an herbal, beautiful, conceptual tree blend that I don't think came back after 2010. Um, and I really, really, I love that one. That's that's a great one. Then we go into, boy, this one is, <laughs> I, every time, I'm gonna say this for the next four, like the best of the best of the best of the best. Um, one that I, that, that I think is sort of a sister scent to this, but is not in this video in my collection, that was Deck the Halls, which is sort of a cashmere blanket sort of, uh, deep, musky, again, cashmere sort of scent. This one is a sister, but different to that, and it is called Sleigh Ride. Uh, and it, that is, let me just, a sleigh with presents, so maybe they could have done a little bit more outdoorsy, conceptual uh, for that imagery. Um, again, this is 2011 collection, and the notes here on the bottom, boy, this one is, this is right up there, guys. Uh, inspired by the fresh winter air on a morning sleigh ride, Notes of frosted juniper, green noble fir, and rosemary are blended perfectly in this new holiday favorite. New holiday favorite that never came back again, which is just like such a bummer. And it has this deep, deep hunter green wax, beautiful. This one, oh, it's, it's, so, it's such a strong, strong burner. Um, this is in the family of, this just kind of hit me out of nowhere, but like um, your bow ties and bourbon, doesn't smell like that, but it, but the those deep uh, boathouse row where it leans almost towards like a a body fragrance, um, but it's deep and rich and has you know these notes of some herbal with some greenery with some you know spicy greenery like your juniper is is really kind of like almost spicy um, or astringent um, and just like a really enveloping heavy conceptual scent and that's what this is um when we think of the juniper i love also from slack and co era you know you don't hear green noble fur necessarily in bath and Vita works candles now it's they've got three or four notes they just throw them in and they really do just kind of lean even towards the notes on just the marketing granted is there marketing here absolutely they say literally it's inspired by fresh winter air on a morning sleigh ride how many of us have taken morning sleigh rides in fresh winter air not me, but the idea of it. Conceptual, it's it's like a beautiful idea. Like every Hallmark movie, Christmas time you're watching, someone's probably riding a sleigh in the morning <laughs> through Ottawa or wherever. Um, but I really truly believe that with Slack and Co, it was Juniper and it was Noble Fur. It, they're very specific and intentional with their notes and saying, should this be fur? Should this be balsam? Should this be, you know, cedar? Should it be cypress? There's really intention behind it, which we see in Homeworks. Um, and I really hope we continue to see in whatever the relaunch of Slack and Co is. But this one, oh boy, the, it, it, this is a really hard one to describe because it does have the, these pine notes to it. But the rosemary is there. I wouldn't call it out specifically as rosemary. Like there, I, I would love to hear actually more what's in this than just those three things, because it's more than just juniper, noble fir, and rosemary. But it's it's like a deep herbal pine, whereas frosted tree is like a vintage, you know, in a, a sweet, bright, you know, twinkling lights in the house with a crackling fire in the background. This one is a bit more outdoor, a bit more earthy. And what I love about this is there was no fear of earthy blends. You know, between that and uh, winter night. These were earthy, conceptual, high-end blends that quite honestly Bath & Body Works demographic maybe just wasn't about, which is why we don't see blends quite like this as often anymore, at least to this level of quality, in my opinion. Oh boy. So yeah, really, this one's lovely. Would love to see something like this come back because so unique. You just can't find um, in, other, in other fragrance houses. All right, now we're getting into, again, that holy trinity, uh, or holy trio, we'll call it, of the best of the best. My absolute top three winter holiday candle scents, period, bar none across the board, thanks to Slack and Co. Two of them are 2011, one in 2010. Um, I think they all probably were in like maybe the 2009, 10, 11 collections, or at least 2010, 2011 collections. And then after that, none of them saw the light of day or the light of a match, <laughs> um, which is such a shame because there's yet to be anything as good as these three from 
Bath & Body Works, in my opinion, in the past 10, 11 years. One of these we did see sort of reimagined at Homeworks, but it was only for two seasons and it didn't come back this year, which is a big bummer for me. Um, but we'll start with first, in no particular order, <laughs> drum roll, uh, Holly Wreath. So again, 2011 collection, you've got sort of a Holly Wreath there under the kaleidoscope. Um, and then you can read some of the notes here for Holly Wreath. Uh, fresh juniper and eucalyptus leaves combined with notes of spicy cinnamon bark and sparkling citrus. So uh, on notes, it's like, oh, that sounds a bit like sort of, you know, is that similar to your merry mistletoe? Or is it similar to many other things out there? But it is so different. I would say, think of fresh balsam. It's got that sort of outdoors whoosh that your fresh balsam brings. Whew. This is, for me, actually, this is like a, a very much an early imagining sister scent to sweater weather. Because think of sweater weather, it has eucalyptus and juniper in it. So this really is in that family, and it wouldn't surprise me if this evolved into sweater weather, because sweater weather uh, first tested for fall 2012 and failed out, which is funny to imagine, because now it's like they're one of their top fall winter scents. Um, came back in 2013 and has been consistent top seller since then. This is similar. But it is holiday. Sweater weather is autumn, fall for me. Um, this one has that cinnamon bark. Not your red heart, red hot. Um, it is the bark of the cinnamon, so a bit more raw and a more of authentic, softer cinnamon. And the sparkling citrus. Let me compare the Merry Mistletoe citrus. Whereas this is a brighter, sweeter, almost like citrus juice, I would say. Um, they say iced citrus. This is... I'm not sure what kind. This could almost be like a little bit of like tangerine, maybe a tiny bit of grapefruit, something like that in there. But it is just primarily the juniper and the eucalyptus. It's like if, if this was a gin, boy, would I drink that. <laughs> like a little bit of eucalyptus, the juniper, which is heavily in many gins, uh, as well as the cinnamon bark and the sparkling citrus. Boy, it just really is a beautiful, beautiful wreath scent with a multitude of notes that don't overwhelm you. Even though they're strong, it doesn't overwhelm you. Then we get into... Again, top two. This one, I don't know why this never came back. It is so great and so few people know or remember because it came out one year. And that is Vanilla Spice. So again, just like some white holly berries there with snow on it. See, this again, yeah, it was late 2000. Oh, this one, yeah, 2010 uh, is what this was. And this one actually, before I read the notes, I believe, I think I said this in an earlier video, but Vanilla Spice was like a late December release back when they had a very different release schedule, Bath & Body Works. And it was Cranberry Perbellini, Hot Buttered Rum, and Vanilla Spice came out. Cranberry Perbellini stayed around for many years, Hot Buttered Rum, can't get rid of that. Vanilla Spice didn't take off, but oh, such, such a miss. Aromatic cinnamon is blended with whipped vanilla, spiced orange peel, balsam, and hint of cherry. So many things going on there, similar to some of these other candles where it's like, you have your spice, you have your, you know, almost a gourmand, you have your citrus, you have the either fruitiness. How do I even describe this? Oh my gosh. Okay, so it is similar to your spice candle. So, or think of your holiday candle if you want to compare it to current Bath & Body Works. Cool down the intensity, the fieriness, the heat of the cinnamon, much softer. And when they say whipped vanilla, that could not be a more accurate description. It's almost meringue. It is like, the vanilla is soft, it is creamy, it is, but not buttery. It's very like powder sugar sort of sweetness. If you, again, just whipped egg whites with some a bit of powdered sugar, like a royal frosting maybe, and had a true vanilla bean in there, but not your, the the, not the same vanilla that is in uh, the Bath and Body Works, uh, like vanilla pumpkin marshmallow. It's not the marshmallow, like the cloying one. But it, yeah, it's just like a, it is a whipped vanilla. The orange peel, maybe they're in the background a little bit, but I'd say it's primarily, the like the name says, the whipped vanilla with that soft cinnamon spice to it. And the cherry, just the tiny, like, you know, cherries and snow, like not the candle cherries and snow, like cherries, but with the snow here in the background. And it's, I mean, I can't say good enough things about it. It's its warm, it's almost gourmand, but it's not true gourmand in itself because it has that balsam and other things playing off of it in there. It's just gorgeous and I am so bummed it hasn't come back. So Harry, bring it back, reimagine it, same name, different name, 
make it better than it was in 2010, that's when I want back from the vaults. And then finally, the OG, the best of the best, Winter Garland. Now this one appeared for a couple of years at BBW under the Slack and code name, probably in 2010, 11, maybe 12, I think maybe just 10 and 11. Um, and then it was reimagined and relaunched as um, Magic Mistletoe, Mistletoe Magic under Homeworks. Very, 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 very similar. Slightly nuanced tweaks, but very close. And I mean, there's nothing better. This is Christmas for me. Um, and the notes here on the bottom for those who wanna see. A sparkling blend of cranberry champagne and blood orange with notes of balsam, mandarin, and white cedar. So this is this is where like Slack and Co can elevate it. So it's not just cedar, it's white cedar. You've got mandarin, which is different than just, you know, your typical navel orange. You've got cranberry, but it's cranberry champagne. So it's the bubbly, but it's not just your champagne toast. Um, there's that note of cranberry without being too uh, berry-like or sweet in there. Um, a little bit of the balsam just to make sure it's the holiday greenery and blood orange versus just your typical orange. This one also, similar to Frosted Tree for me as far as vibes, is that vintage Christmas. Not in scent, but like put these in trio and call it, you know, a vintage Christmas and, and sell it. And you've got a, a hit. Oh, but God. Ugh. I could do a whole video on this and I probably should. Maybe a comparison between this and the Mistletoe Magic. But it really is a little bit boozy with that, the sparkling champagne. You've got the citrus from the blood orange. You've got the balsam. It almost feels more like a spruce to me because it's a bit sweeter and softer than what you think of like as a balsam to be. Um, maybe that's the white cedar playing in there too. I love cedar notes, but it's not dark and heavy and resinous like cedar sometimes can be. Um, and that mandarin playing with the blood orange has multiple citruses in there. It just, it smells like Christmas. It smells like Christmas morning to me. It's beautiful um really like my all-time favorite um christmas holiday scent so we're hitting 32 minutes not sure how many of you made it to the end comment below let me know if you made it to the end i you know i think i'm known for having the long videos back in back in the day when i was uploading you know in version one of touch fire twice and rambling on but when it comes to slack and co when it comes to 2011 collection when it comes to holiday top 12 Listen, we're lucky this wasn't an hour long video because I could have gone longer for every single candle. Um, but these are the ones where I'm saying, Harry, bring them back from the vault. I'll run through the names one more time in case anyone <laughs> needs to, to to write them down or listen for like reinvigorating, revitalizing them uh, as part of Slack and the Coast. We've got Winter Garland, Vanilla Spice, Holly Wreath, Sleigh Ride, Merry Mistletoe, Winter Night, Frosted Tree, Dark Chocolate Mint, Vanilla Shortbread, Spice, and Holiday Pomander. The best of the best, Slack & Co. we know has been and hopefully will continue to be the best. Um, stay tuned. I will have the spring, summer, fall, uh, and year-round scents for the From the Vault, Harry Bring Them Back, Slack & Co. scents. Uh, let me know what you think. And until next time, everyone, take care.